Well, the uncertainty over GST rates is out of the way now, but there are heightened fears of disruption that its adaptation and compliance might cause even if just in the short term. To discuss that and what holds for the markets, we are being joined by Mr. U.R. Bhatt of uh, Dalton Capital Advisors. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on uh, this. Uh, edition of thank god is friday sir so a lot of uh, there's been a lot of doubt around the preparedness of the system to be able to implement uh, gst and uh, we've also been hearing of lower inventory uh, stocking from various companies uh, ahead of the rollout but now that the tax for various uh, categories are out do you think it removes at least some overhang for the markets of course i mean there was a lot of uncertainty on the taxation uh, levels but i think that is more or less over now but I think the, the issue about GST is not so much about taxation levels True. as about the disruption it would cause in terms of uh, ease of doing business. Uh, because uh, I think the sort of number of returns they have to file, I think they will, quite a lot of these SMEs uh, and MSMEs, mm -hmm. they will have a lot of problem complying with the regulation and complying with the uh, requirement of filing so many returns for various states. I think these are the things that people will have to get used to and I think it will take the best part of a couple of quarters at least for companies to get used to. But hasn't that, that been priced in at least partially because of course we don't know the entire extent that of the disruption that might be caused but at least partially hasn't that been already priced and in? And if I may add, you have spoken earlier about markets being sanguine about GST. Yeah. But markets are now at lifetime highs. Mm. So uh, what do we do with these? Well, uh, so therefore it only shows that uh, when she's saying it, it has been priced in it, at, at uh, you know, market peaks, right. uh, it's hardly priced it because it, right. so it, it, it market seems to suggest that there is no disruption, that everything is fine and business, business as usual. I don't think it will be business as usual. At least right. for at least a couple of quarters, I think there will be significant uh, disruption that will be caused. Right. So, uh, can we expect a larger hit on the bottom line? And if we are talking about a hit on the bottom line, that means that this will also delay recovery in earnings. And if we are looking at a delay in recovery in earnings, then what do we do with the valuations at which the markets are currently standing? Well, I think the disruption may not necessarily sort of um, reduce demand. Right. Demand will still be there. They will still be able to sell. But I think as far as compliance is concerned, there will be a lot more of effort that is required right. from the back offices of these companies to, to be compliant. Right. So I think there will be disruptions on account of that. Uh, but it is nobody's argument that you know demand will evaporate or something like that. I think uh, and the bottom line also could well be there. But I think there are a lot of unsettling as far as uh, the, the way they do business. I think that is what will cause uh, uh, disruption. Not so much in terms of the bottom line. But uh, at these valuations that you know nearly 20 times uh, FI18 valuations, yes. I don't think we have the comfort of uh, uh, valuation. Uh, valuation is not on the side. It is just liquidity that is taking it up. And uh, who knows if liquidity continues, it can still be there around these levels or even higher. But uh, no, in, in the medium term, it is valuations that will de determine uh, market levels. In the short term, it could be uh, it could be liquidity, and that's what's happening now. Right. So, how do you see the global environment uh, turning out to be now? Because there are some sort of global worries that seem to be returning with political turmoil in US and um, uh, Brazil. Do you think we're likely to move to some sort of a risk-off mode now, uh, especially when it comes to emerging markets, and that could really mean uh, some sort of a downside risk for countries like India? Absolutely, because um, if you really see the North Korean problem is still out there and uh, then today I, I just now read that uh, the Chinese aircraft were challenging some uh, US military aircraft o o right. over the North China Sea. So I think things are you know, not exactly well, very well uh, settled and it is not at equilibrium. And uh, you have these problems with the, uh, the US presidency, what is right. going to happen there. I think all these things can create uh, further problems and you have further elections in Europe which, which can throw up uh, surprises. And you have enough problems in South America where, uh, you know, Brazil is probably going to uh, declare uh, that they cannot uh, meet their obligations. Right. So I think there are several problems out there which can uh, sort of flare up any time. Uh, but the markets don't seem to suggest that. So right. uh, since the market is going up against these, this background, so if, if some, something flares up, I think there will be probably more steeper corrections. Right. You know, uh, Janet Yellen has suggested that uh, despite what's going on with Donald Trump's presidency, she is going to keep... Uh, with her trajectory of increase in interest rates. Of course, the RBI has also turned neutral on their stance when it comes to interest rates. What does this mean for fund flows in India? Well, I think every hike in interest rates in, in the US, of course, 
couple of hikes or maybe even three or four hikes might have been factored in. Right. But even if it's factored in, when it actually happens, there's certainly some, some turmoil in the market. And who knows if uh, the way US, uh, the, the US economy is doing, doing quite reasonably well, uh, there might be even further hikes than what the market is budgeting for. Right. So if that happens, I think there could be uh, certainly some effect on uh, fund flows into into India, and India also may be changing, taking a U-turn as far as uh, um, as far as interest rates are concerned. Right. There might be a hike sometimes very soon. So that will again affect uh, uh, the the valuations. Sometime very soon would be uh, would you would you hazard a guess as to when this year possibly? I think this year is possible it's because possible. Uh, you know they come to neutral and uh, the language doesn't seem to be as dovish as it used to be. Right. So therefore, we are, may not be very far off from uh, some hike sometime right. probably later this year. Okay, uh, Mr. Bhatt, a word of warnings that we've seen so far. You know, uh, where do you see the biggest chances of uh, a turnaround coming in as far as earnings growth is concerned, based on what we've seen so far? Well, earnings turnaround, the big turnaround has to happen in public sector banks, but uh, we have probably quite some distance away from that because uh, we are still having uh, you know accumulation of uh, accelerated accumulation of NPAs so that is a very serious problem which needs to be tackled by the government probably one of those problems that are, that are yet to be tackled but uh, I mean that is where big turnaround can happen but otherwise I think earnings have not been exactly terribly disappointing auto numbers are reasonably all right um, private sector banks have done well private sector NBFCs have, uh, have done very well um, and uh, industrials also have done reasonably all right uh, because it is probably better than what uh, initial expectations were. But I think uh, the problem was largely with the public sector banks and uh, it's very difficult for us to imagine that uh, the, uh, the GDP growth can be accelerated without the banks participating in the financing of that growth. So right. therefore I think something needs to be done there. Right. So once again if I were to pitch uh, PSU banks against public sector banks uh, or um, I beg your pardon, uh, private sector banks. We know that there is a substantial gap between the valuations of the two, but uh, at least one part of the market is now backing the, PS, the PSU banks for now. Uh, how would you play PSUs versus the private sector now? Well, as of now, with the private sector, because they're rapidly gaining market share. Right. Uh, because if you really see, I mean, uh, probably two thirds of the market is still served by the public sector banks. But if you see over the last three years, the 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 market share of the incremental business, I think. It's dominated by the by, by the private sector because right. the public sector banks have hardly grown but these yes. uh, are growing at you know 15 20 25 percent so therefore quite a lot of the growth has been captured by the uh, private sector banks right. and that's how they're gaining market share now um, I think there are several things that need to be done before the public sector banks can really show some uh, mm, uh, show some growth but I think the issue is as I said that it is such a large part of the uh, the banking sector that you cannot ignore it so the right. government has to come out with a solution even though it is very delayed but it has to come through uh, with a solution and when the solution does come about I think they have the huge the best distribution in town so therefore there could be a lot of value resting there but right. I think the immediate problems have to be solved I think so those who have the faith that the government will do something about it they, they probably are buying it right. <laughs> So does that also mean that there is a higher alpha that is there to be made from PSU banks given that there is a higher likelihood of some turnaround, consolidation, recapitalization, etc. So, I mean, as a tactical play, would you still, um, you know, uh, select PSU banks or you would continue to stick with private banks? See, the alpha is very much there. The alpha could be huge. Alpha could be, you know, 100% plus. But then you can't time it so very well. True. So uh, it could be several quarters, it could be a couple of years, it could be two quarters. Right. So therefore, uh, if you have the, this faith that something would, would, would happen here, you can as well be early because you don't know when it will happen. Okay, so, uh, you know, the markets, it seems, at least for now, have given the FMCG stocks uh, a thumbs up when it comes to the GST rates. Uh, we're looking at, we're expecting normal monsoons. Mm. But that said, of course, the valuations at which they are, that, uh, you know, some may argue that they've always been very richly priced. Uh, are there opportunities even in this sector? Well, I think so, because finally, we, you know, all growth uh, uh, finally happens because of uh, growth in consumption. Right. And so, therefore, if the consumption growth happens, I think these are natural beneficiaries. And yes. uh, with the branded ones, I think uh, there is always that aspirational target for, for ones lower down in the hierarchy to get there. So therefore, right. I think there will always be growth there. Uh, and you know, all said and done, you may always argue that it, they have uh, you know, stressed valuations and all that. But you know, these are companies which are, have uh, ROEs which are uh, you know, unimaginable. Right. Uh, there are 90, 100% ROE companies. Absolutely. So therefore, yes. there is a case for them to be valued 
like that. Right. Uh, even though we may quarrel with that, it is very high compared. But if you really juxtapose it with the ROEs, I think these companies are doing phenomenally well. And I think uh, quite a lot of the justific uh, justification is there for valuations may not be to the stretch levels, right. but quite a lot of valuation is probably factored because of the higher, higher ROE. Okay. Yeah. Uh, two wheeler stocks have made a good comeback at least in the last month or so. So you have your uh, Hero and um, Aisha Motors, Bajaj Auto, all of these outperforming the auto index um, uh, mm -hmm. per se, but uh, where do you see uh, value as far as auto names are uh, concerned, whether two wheelers or uh, you know when something like uh, Mahindra and Mahindra which has a uh, agri component or w your perspective on auto stocks? Well you have diversified plays there and you have few plays. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, diversified plays are for those who are slightly um, uh, more risk averse mm -hmm. uh, but the few plays are for those who understand the business very well and see where the growth is going to come from. But I think uh, both sectors there is growth there is no doubt about that. But uh, you know there are perennial favorites like uh, the in the four wheeler uh, market you know you have couple of them who have perennial, perennial favorites. So I think uh, there is growth there. Uh, I think on a bad day you should buy them. There, there is no, probably not much of a fun in buying at any level. Right. But on a bad day I think you will get them at good prices. Right. right. Mr. Bhatt, uh, considering the levels at which where the markets are, of course a lot of sectors have moved up. Where do you find value? In what sectors do you still think that there could be some more space before they can also need to, they can catch up with the rest of uh, the, the market or the industry? See, when we say that valuation is stretched, I think at current understanding of um, earnings growth, I think valuations are stretched right. probably across the board. There, right. is, there is no cheap stock out Absolutely. there. So the point is that where would the delta come in terms of earnings, which is not factored by the market. Okay. Uh, that is where I said PSU banks could be, if, if the right decisions are taken, PSU banks could offer huge delta there. Okay. But otherwise, uh, the, the growth momentum in even the private sector banks and NBFCs, they would it would continue. Right. But some of them are uh, stretched beyond imagination. I think they need to be a sort of probably short, shorted. Right. But uh, by far, I think uh, uh, there is no great uh, you know, case for buying uh, across the board. I think there may but be specific stocks here and there. Okay, so uh, two sectors come to mind. Uh, one is media and the other one is logistics. Um, your your view on both these sectors, because uh, at least as far as, uh, you know, the, the prima facie observations concerned, they have not run up as much as the rest of the sectors. Well, I think the logistics had run, uh, whenever you know, people started talking about GST from that time they have been running. Right, right. So therefore, uh, now at least the GST has to happen and all these uh, numbers have to come. Yes. Only then probably the next leg of, of the run up will be there. Okay. Or at least whatever expectations are there, they have to be you know close to getting realized. Right. So I think they, they, it has had its run. They, right. I, I don't think you can argue right. that they are right. cheap now. Right. Media is a, is a, is a, is a difficult uh, sort of sector to uh, really, because most of them are not profitable are right. barely profitable. Yes. So therefore, I mean, one can't really value such companies because, and the competition is very intense. So therefore, it is not as if uh, someone is uh, getting away and li living the sort of uh, arena for uh, for an oligopoly. It is not right. so. It's fiercely competitive. It's a bit like telecom. Yes. There was destructive competition. Uh, it's a bit like that, even in media. Right. So therefore, I think you have to probably wait out to see who are the potential winners and take a, take a bet too early. Too early. I think the market is very wise in not pricing them right. uh, at you know, uh, ex uh, stressed valuations. So wait yeah. out and see and uh, wait for the opportunities to come Absolutely. back. Well, uh, Mr. Bhatt, it was a pleasure speaking with you. My Thank pleasure. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. for you guys, once again, we'll see you next week on another edition of Thank God It's Friday. Till then, it's goodbye.